Serious, how far have you gone to help someone, only to get fricked over in the end? My mom started working with a food pantry in the late 80s. She met two very young women who had babies. They were homeless and having been a young single mom herself, my mom decided to help them. She found them an apartment and paid the rent for two months. She got all the utilities turned on, furnished the place and stocked the fridge and pantry. She helped them find jobs and got the church to help find low cost childcare. Basically, she set them up to succeed. Pretty quickly, the both quit their jobs, got back together with their dirt bag, convict, abusive boyfriends. My mom said she really started having really bad vibes from them. She was also getting fed up with their bad decisions and eventually walked away from the situation. They quickly got evicted. Of course, they end up back at the food pantry telling their sob story to an old lady who worked there. The old lady and her husband take them into their home temporarily. Well, a couple days in, one of the dirtbag boyfriends robs and murders the old couple. My mom was so freaked out over how close she came to being murdered. Edit. I believe that the three of them went to prison. I think the girl's sentences were shorter than his. If I have time tomorrow, I'll run by the library and look for the old news articles about it and update. I just can't remember everything well right now because it was almost 30 years ago. I think these types of people are the biggest reasons why people steer clear from giving charity. You can never tell if the people are just down on their luck, or if they're seriously terrible people who are where they are because of their own poor decisions and are just relying on other people to take advantage of. Got a 19 year old homeless kid off the street at the age of 18 with the help of my mom. Within 2 weeks we had him on welfare and in a housing place. The bastard ended up taking my laptop. The way I saw it was sometimes being good to people doesn't serve to gratify you but to teach you a lesson. Not everyone will take your generosity and appreciate it, but almost all will take it. I had a friend who needed a lift from work. The problem was he lived and worked 50 miles away. Empathizing, I decided on helping him and drove 2 hours in heavy traffic to pick him up. After getting there, I asked for a cigarette. Him. Sorry man, this is my last pack. Me. But it's a full pack, and I just drove 2 hours to come and get you, Tim. I could have always found another ride. Okay, find it. A very close friend of mine years ago was hard up. He really needed some money to get by. The number was $2000, and I was able to help him out, so I did. Shortly after loaning it to him, he stopped being as sociable with towards me. We didn't hang out as much. Then he got a job on the other side of the country. I'd call and reach him once in a blue moon, but he'd never contact me. Every time I mentioned that loan, he would give a sob story about how he's so broke, paying back more important debts, etc, etc. Apparently loans from friends don't matter as much in his books. He also wound up unfriending me on social sites, even though he wound up with a high paying government job earning significantly more money than me. He would give his excuses. I more or less gave up when I was unemployed, desperately needed money, and he had some freaking sob story about how broke he was, but never did get it back. General rule, never lend money to friends. If you want to help them out, give them the money as a gift. Over the span of a few years I tried to help out an old friend of mine. I would always go out of my way to do anything I could to lend a hand, be it financially or just be there for him. I feel pretty dumb when I look back at the amount of wasted time and energy and also money I put his way. I never felt like he would take advantage of my kindness, but I feel over time he just came to expect it. One of the last times we hung out, he was holed up in his room, getting high and going nowhere. I don't think he'd even left the house for about 2 weeks. I took over some beers and ordered a pizza for us. The kind of crap I would do all the time, for little to no thanks. The doorbell sounds. I get up and go to get it. I pull my wallet out and I had a loose 20 pounds that slipped out of my pocket while grabbing my wallet. It hit the floor. I thought frick it, I'll grab it on the way back. I pay for the pizza. Get back and sit down. The money is gone. I give him a minute to see how it plays out. I know he's taken it. We eat the pizza and keep drinking. I stick my hand in my pocket and tell him I'm missing a 20. I act like I may have dropped it and start checking other pockets. 
He's sitting there stuffing his face with pizza, watching me look for the 20 pound and not saying a word. I finish my food, I'm debating whether to mention the money, but in the end I just left. If I mentioned the money, I know he would have fiercely deny taking it. That was me done with him. I felt good leaving the house that night, knowing that he'd lost a friend, one of the few he had left, all over 20 pounds. If you loan someone $20 and never see that person again, it was probably worth it. Grew up in a dysfunctional family. As an adult, I tried to help my mom leave her abusive husband. When I realized that she'd always go back to her familiar rut, I resigned myself to distancing myself from my toxic family. That is until I saw her at a family get together and she was shaking uncontrollably and had difficulty speaking. The abuse was literally driving her into a continuous nervous breakdown. That was too much to see. I contacted my siblings and we made a pact to support her leaving her marriage no matter what. Well that lasted less than a day with my siblings pointing the fingers of blame towards me. This resulted in my father dying believing that I was out to get him, my mother now being a pawn of my siblings, and an extended family who dislikes me. Good, go start a new family that isn't insane. About 35 years ago, I met a couple about my age at a church, down on their luck, unemployed and with a newborn. The pastor talked me into letting them stay in a vacant apartment I had. No problem, I say, stay rent free till you're employed. Then, there is an opening at my work. The husband gets hired on my recommendation. He doesn't do too bad of a job, either. Within a week or so, I keep hearing from co-workers that he is a piece of crap and is constantly trying to get me in trouble and fired. I confront him and of course he denies it, but it continues. It was bad enough they fire him for being a troublemaker. Once I had proof of his backstabbing, I gave him and his wife a notice to move. The pastor tried to intervene suggesting forgiveness and understanding. Fine I say, I'll tell them they can't move in with you. Oddly enough, he had no more to say. So, to get them to move, I had to physically force them out. Didn't care about the legalities at this point. These ashats had trashed the apartment in less than 2 months, ruining the floors, breaking several windows and damaging the drawway eye in every room. The worst part, they never took out their trash, just piled it up. I took out at least 20 large garbage bags of diapers. The cleaning was way worse than the repairs. Since then, I've never helped anyone get a job, helped any Christians, or allowed anyone to skate on rent ever. Should have told the pastor to come by to see how the couple was faring in their new apartment, then get the hypocrite to help you clean the place up. I was living in Manhattan a few years ago in a 3BR apartment near Gramercy Park. One of the guys in our apartment had taken another job opportunity but was still stuck paying rent on the room as he had not yet found a subletter. In comes a friend of mine from my college days who was rather down and out. He had just been laid off from his job in Chicago, was in debt, etc, etc. He came for a few days to visit his older brother, who lives nearby, and see what his next move was going to be. At the time I had a girlfriend and a good social circle. I vowed to get his resume and turn it into a job offer and to also get him a spot in our 3BR apartment at a highly reduced rental rate, given the third guy was paying for the room. I ended up making due on these promises and helping my friend out big time. He got a job offer, still is with the company years later, got him out of debt. He was paying one stroke three of the rent he should have been, got him happy and in control of his life again. A few months later. Things didn't work out with my girlfriend and I and we went our separate ways. This friend and roommate I had all along started sleeping with her and ended up ditching us after Ray signing our lease and leaving us with a terrible Craigslist subletter. He skimmed thousands of dollars in rent that we could have kept for ourselves, fricked my gf, and peaced out. I don't trust people as easily anymore. I lived in a house with 4 other guys in college. Other than one guy that lived there, I was the only one remotely responsible enough to handle all the bills. Over the course of the year and a half I lived there, I was sometimes out over $1000 of my own money to cover for people who didn't have their money on time for rent and utilities. But finally, when it comes time to move out, I let them know with over a month's notice that I will be moving out and need my money repaid. No one pays. Move out day comes. No one pays. At this point I'm fairly upset, however it only gets worse. 
after continually asking for my money, and providing detailed accounting statements of what they owe me. One of the guys, who was the worst about paying me on time, swears up and down he paid for his last month's utilities, something like $130. He never did, which I tell them, and they proceed to ask to see my bank statements. When I tell them no, they all gang up and start accusing me of stealing the money and how shady it is. When I fire back, I'm obviously upset. They just use this to say funny how once we accuse you of that you get personal and get so upset. You're sucker. I had to put my own money on the line cause you were too dumb to pay rent on time. Unfortunately, I had no contract with these guys saying what they had to pay, so they basically all told me it was my fault and I just had to bite the bullet. Ended up being out $700, but learned to be a lot less trusting with people, and always have contracts and paper trails. I've posted about this person before, but where can I start? Stole $900 from me for crack. Stole my car, completely burned my transmission up 2k dollars, would leave used, uncapped syringes all over my house, including in my freaking shoes, good thing I never poked myself, turned out he has hepatitis, it goes on, he was one of the funniest, nicest people you would want to know when he was sober, when drunk high, he was a rather large pose, I was in a bad place myself when I knew him, took a while to break all ties, but finally did. I still think about the good times we had. It makes me a little sad. Tried to help a friend of mine once. He had serious family issues, but seemed like a pretty cool guy. The only problem was, he'd steal anything he was even mildly interested in. As soon as you weren't looking, it was gone. He would never admit it either. I literally had to hold him down and pat his pockets. Then he'd just apologize and have a whole sob story about why he needed the stupid thing. Anyway, he had nowhere to live at one point, so he stayed with me despite all my friends trying to alert me of all the red flags. I figured as long as I kept my valuables out of sight, there wouldn't be any major issues. Two weeks later, my fire safe goes missing from under my bed. He had the balls to do it while I had two other friends in the house who saw him go into my bedroom and come out with a suspiciously large pile of laundry that wasn't his, and he didn't even bother washing lol. He left and didn't come back for 24 hours. He denied it of course, for a week until another one of his friends heard about it and spilled the beans that's where you got the $500, so he cried, and whined, and made up crap. I in my infinite stupidity decided to let him stay and figured he could pay an extra $100 a month in rent to pay me back. I come home the next day to find all my DVDs, gaming console, and games gone, as well as his room cleaned out. Freaking piece of crap scumbag. That was the only time in my life I've seriously considered murder. I mean the first time is really on the person who was staying with you. Why the heck you'd let someone who stole $500 worth of crap stay again is beyond me. Hopefully karma will catch up to them. My boyfriend's stepbrother was having issues with his roommates and asked to move in with us. He was clean and we'd all lived together before so I saw no problem. Three days later he'd moved in his brand new girlfriend from work because she had a crappy roommate too. Allegedly, although I'm sure she was just a C like she was to us in the end. Things were fine for the most part, we even helped them move into our complex a few buildings down and gave them some furniture. However, the second their crap was out of my apartment, they suddenly didn't have the money for their portion of the bills still owed and I needed to just figure it out myself since, well, we have to take care of our own. Sorry, I was 19 years old, supporting my boyfriend who just lost his job the previous month, on the tips I made serving at a small chain restaurant, while juggling being a full time student, caring for 3 animals, and my rapidly deteriorating health at the same time. I could barely make it up the 3 flights of stairs to my apartment without collapsing from exhaustion due to my medical condition and those pieces of crap stuck me with a $600 bill due in 4 days and walked away knowing dang well I'd have to serve my butt off just to make it on time. Frick you Josh and Sierra, I hope your gas tank gets sugared and your cosmetics give you a skin infection. And your cosmetics give you a skin infection. Crap just got real yo. Once in a while I used to go buy a bunch of stuff for the homeless, 
granola bars, gloves, mouthwash, etc, and give it to the first one I saw while driving. The last time I did this the man I gave the basket to threw it all into oncoming traffic. He was sitting near a highway, and aggressively yelled at me for not giving him money instead. Ro, frick him. I hope that didn't make you stop being a good person. I once bought a bunch of warm socks for a group of homeless guys hanging out near where I was shopping and they were pretty appreciative. I guess even if one of them had wanted money instead, another one of them would have been happy with his socks. This is not the biggest deal but my little brother and I, I was 19, he was 13, were in the McDonald's drive through line and it was about 11pm. The plaza was pretty empty and there was really no one out, only about 3 cars in the line. A teenage boy taps on my window and tells me how his ride hasn't arrived and he needs to call his dad urgently and he's scared and asks to borrow a phone to make a quick phone call. He seemed pretty panicky and I felt bad and didn't want him out alone so late but I was also a little bit hesitant. At the time I had just gotten a new iPhone after getting it stolen at a nightclub so I really didn't want to let him borrow mine so I tell my brother to let him use his phone and that it will be alright. I give him my brother's phone. He dials, puts the phone at his ear, stands there for about 10 seconds and then sprints off running. I couldn't believe it at first and I was beating myself up inside because I was scared of this happening and now he had stolen my brother's phone. My brother was really sad and started crying. Even though it was an old android phone not worth much, it was his first phone and he was pretty excited about it. I felt really bad. I bought my brother a new phone two weeks later and that experience taught me that not everyone means well and some people are just complete scum. That's why I always say, here I'll dial the number and put it on speakerphone and hold it. Three times out of five they decline and walk away. I went to work for a guy who had a computer business back in the late 80s. I'll leave out the details for the sake of anonymity of the other parties involved. Early on things are good, but it quickly became apparent the business was in trouble. I doubled down and loaned him $60k, a multitude of computer systems and networking gear I owned, and ended up taking in one of his programmers in my home where we, quite literally, worked around the clock for a couple of months to get his product out the door. We're at the office one day, my kids in tow, and the owner shows up with a 9mm and runs everyone off at gunpoint. By the time we get cops there, the place is already cleaned out and he's in the wind. I lost the $60k, all of my computer equipment, and then, later, discover that the programmer that I had taken in had been sexually molesting my kids. I gave the programmer the choice of going with me to the police department to confess everything he had done, or never being heard from again. I never caught back up with the business owner. What the frick man. That's messed up in multiple ways, and at the end of the day the money is nothing when it comes to your kids well being. I hope they were okay. This is kinda spot on cause this just recently happened. So my boss doc not have a car and frequently asks me to, to take him to work and back when we work. Same schedule, over time at work he rewards me by pushing off assignments and doing assignments different ways. I never argue with him cause when he gets upset he just makes everything horrible and terrible. Handful of times he losses his crap over stuff that could have just been solved with calm conversation. Dude's kinda scary with his history of being with gangs and crap. Anyway he asks me outside of work to take him a couple places here and there. I really didn't have the heart to tell him no. Big freaking mistake. But I agreed. I drive a large pickup truck too so mileage is poor as frick so randomly giving me 5 bucks every ride now and then is just a slap to the face. Over time of the year I've been getting horribly annoyed with his asking of rides and more than common I find how he commands crap rude so now I more like to point I just tolerate him and enjoy my time off. As it starts to get colder he gave his wife my cell number and starts asking me to take her job and her scheduled is exact the same as mine. Her job is legit 20 minutes of walking distance and uses the excuse of being too cold out and raining act. Following morning came where I had decided I need to stop being so nice to people who really don't freaking need it. All the places they need rides to are walking distance even for groceries and crap. Anyway last week I kept getting woken up to her calling and I explained how I'm stopping the rides and moving on to pursing my times with things. I put my phone to do not disturb and went back to sleep. Boss man tried to call me a hundred times and woke up to the message ok homeboy I see how it is. 
see you at work if you show up I know him well and when implies that kinda crap to people he normally has some kind of get you fired or scream at balls up his sleeve. I tried talking to my larger bosses about it and he said he will handle it but knowing how he don't really do crap I knew it was affected. I told my co-workers later that day and quit on the spot. Not happy with drama or how the company carries so many stupid fights. Never said no to him before and it ends up in a crap show. Got hired on to help current network admin upgrade and secure network. A year later, most things set and working well. We get to talking about security and how to avoid getting hacked. I make the joke if you really want to see how easy it would be to hack into this place. Go make a post on the internet about how secure your network is and how no one could ever hack in. I meant nothing by it other than a jest about how a hacker will find a way if they really want to. Well, this guy goes and tells the boss what I said, so they fired me because I was a threat to their network security. WTF. Met my ex best friend through another friend. When I met her her apartment was disgusting because she never cleaned. She smelled kind of weird because she rarely did her laundry and she only ate fast food or whatever anyone else would bring her. She was super depressed so never had the drive to go out. Luckily her stepmom owned her apartment and said she wouldn't have to pay rent until she got a job or else she would have had no place to live because she had no job the first 6 months I knew her. Who knows how long before that and had to bum money for her $50 cell phone bill each month, which I helped pay on occasion. Her old roommate she found on Craigslist moved out so I moved in, helped clean the place up and make it look livable. Cooked dinner for us every night because she legit had no idea how to cook so she wasn't just eating fast food every day and hating herself for it. Got her to start going out of the house again and hanging out with her friends again. My job had an opening for $11 HR to scan papers all day. Full time MF health insurance. Paid vacation etc. So that job was basically handed to her when I told HR I knew someone for it. She started to feel better about herself. Keeping the place clean, doing laundry, buying new clothes etc. Finally had money and health insurance to be able to see a psychiatrist to help with her depression. Ah and then she meets a guy. Total crap. Abuses her physically and mentally. I helped her so many times after incidents with him and I was basically the only person there for her. I knew her for a month before her dad died and I was one of two of her friends who dropped everything to help her out afterwards. Her BF knew I didn't like him and he was afraid I would get in her head and convince her to leave him. So he got in her head first and convinced her I was a crappy friend. Broke up our friendship causing me to have to move out and back in with my parents. We had an argument a few weeks later when I saw her and we were both drunk where she basically laughed in my face when I told her I helped her get her life together. She stayed with him for almost another year after that and I lost the best friend I ever had. Honestly makes me afraid to ever risk my own happiness to help someone else get their crap together and it's heartbreaking to watch someone you love be destroyed by someone else knowing nothing you do can help. No amount of help you do for someone who is mentally ill is gonna defeat the mental illness. They need real professional help. Not saying you wasted your time or that one shouldn't help those in need, but it's a band-aid when what they need is surgery. Mental illness is very real and very powerful. I've got a good one for this. My best and only friend's mother passed away. Him being pretty young my parents helped him learn most adult things. But a lot of it came onto me, which I didn't mind at all. I was the only one who helped him move twice. I was the only one willing to drive him to work 5 days a week for months. Which was the night shift on top of that. All while working full time myself. Bought him 2 weeks worth of food when he didn't have any money because he is paid bi weekly and just had to pay bills. Never paid me back for that or the dollar sign 400 in gas to drive him to work. But made promises to do it. Which is fine. He's living on his own. Money's tight I get it. Then he bought a $200 tat and started smoking a lot of pot. Bought his sister who is living rent free with a job at her boyfriend's house a bunch of stuff. And paid her phone bill the entire time for some reason. I taught him how to drive and listened to his girl problems with his co-workers non-stop. My girlfriend invited him to a surprise trip to the beach for free. Where he acted like a spoiled brat unless he was drunk. Then in the end he just ghosted me. Tried getting a hold of him for a month and nothing. He finally texted me a few months afterwards say something like hey man it's been a while. What have you been up to like nothing happened. Hopefully you ghosted him back. 
If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.